When I made last month's video, I thought that would be it. I figured stuff would slow down and that there wouldn't be much to say this time around. But I was wrong, as the coronavirus saga takes some unexpected twists. First off, what I've been up to. The other day I met up with my parents for the first time since the pandemic. We followed all of the guidelines, taking separate cars, sitting two metres apart, outside. That's the theory, but it's always different in practice. You spot the weak links straight away, the food on the table in the middle, the shuffle about as somebody goes to the toilet, the homemade dessert. A meeting should be no bigger than six people, but we had seven because otherwise he'd have been lonely. And being England, it rained. And was cold. Probably for the first time since lockdown began. My parents handed everyone freshly washed blankets. That's a lot of washing they'll have to do now. It was a nice day. I think me before the lockdown would have wanted to know when and what this encounter would have been like. Because when it starts out, you imagine you're not going to see anybody for years. Or that by the time you do, everything will be different. But family's family, and even after months apart, that meeting felt normal. A home comfort amidst these extraordinary times. I mentioned in my last video that I still wash my hands and stuff, but have gotten complacent with other parts of the lockdown. I assumed this to be an inevitability given the months and months we've endured it for. But in some places, some people are still doing it 100%. My parents, for example, their daily routine was still heavily dictated by these guidelines. It clearly impacts everything they try to do, but they're still sticking to whatever the government says, no corners cut. I understand that being older, they're at more risk from the disease than I am. But it was as though the routine fatigue hadn't even begun. They seemed just as concerned and as fearful as when all this had started out. Physically, that's probably the best way to be. I just hope it's okay for their mental well-being. England, as a whole, is doing rather well. By that I mean we're still the worst in Europe for infections and deaths, but at least now the daily figures are dropping. We're apparently down to pre-lockdown levels of infection, so that's nice to know. The government wanted to set up a large contact tracing system, but it seems to have run into problem after problem. It might just be the news blowing it out of all proportion. Looking around I can't see much about it at all, but from what I've heard, it seemed like they struggled to recruit enough people, then once they had, the system seemed incapable of coordinating the workload. The contact tracing app was trialled on the Isle of Wight, and he's yet to leave it. It goes without saying that these measures weren't ready to deal with the first surge of cases, but should the coronavirus lurk around for long enough into the future, then these measures might end up helping in some way. Someone in my house was interested in becoming a contact tracer, but living in rented accommodation said we'd need to take out house insurance and ultimately decided it wasn't worth the hassle, and it pays close to minimum wage. England's no longer in proper lockdown, but people are advised to remain indoors and to exercise social distancing. I'm in the bit of England that was least affected by the first wave, which means it has developed the least resistance against the second one. It's no coincidence that it now has one of the highest infection rates in the country, as the excellent weather, right up until my family reunion, caused people to flock to the beaches. Hopefully they were all locals and not people from elsewhere who broke lockdown to bring their families and diseases to new areas. Whomever they may be, this was what the beach at Durdle Door looked like. Several people thought it would be a good idea to jump off this 200 foot tall arch. They sustained serious injuries, needing medical assistance, and as the helicopters landed, everybody on the beach had to huddle together. After months of having social distancing hammered into everything you do, you kind of wonder why you bother when stuff like this is going on. It's just frustrating. If I'm honest, coronavirus is yesterday's news. The roads are back to normal, pubs will reopen at the start of next month, and bit by bit, things are returning to how they were before this all started. The front page of Reddit nicely depicts whatever's on America's mind right now, and it seems their focus has moved away from the coronavirus and onto Black Lives Matter. George Floyd was killed in America from a policeman restraining and suffocating him with a knee to the neck. This enraged the country and spurred on a movement to get things changed. The protests started in America but have spread to other countries. Here in England, people are protesting in the thousands in London. Bricks were tossed at police horses and just the other day, people smashed statues in Bristol. If I'm honest, I'm not sure if I support smashing the bits of history that I don't like. It sets a dangerous precedent. Being from England, I don't even see what protesting here is going to achieve exactly. The George Floyd incident is very much an American one. Here in England, our police are different and our issues with racism also different. It is not the same as the American problem, nor do I think should be tackled in the same way. Were it not for the ongoing pandemic, I totally understand public displays in London and the like to show support. But it's just… now? Really? A week of protesting racism here is going to achieve very little, whereas it's going to do a hell of a lot to help the spread of coronavirus. 
It's incredibly unfortunate timing, but I think the pandemic is of more immediate concern to our everyday lives in England. I can't help but think that one thing led to the other. With people laid off work and stuck at home for months, I think people seek meaning and purpose, and being able to go out and protest fits the bill brilliantly. I do wonder if, much like World War I resulting in Spanish flu, if the coronavirus has in some way fueled these protests. No one could have predicted this. The pace of this year has been unbelievable. Coronavirus went from nothing, to a global threat, to something everybody was bored of, to being something that's getting in the way of racial equality. What's next? We're not even halfway through the year just yet. I wonder how the history books are going to describe this. The protests are another unforeseen variable to change the trajectory that the coronavirus outbreak will take. Another reason why plans are never as simple as they may first seem. And another divide down the community on an issue we should all be united on. Right now, a lot is happening, but it'll be equally interesting to see how choices made now will have affected things in a month or so. Despite the reduced lockdown, the infection and death rates continue to decline. Will this continue despite the protests and holidaymakers? What will happen after the pubs have reopened? Will people want to risk it? And now, with the government tracking the virus's R number in different parts of England, will they begin issuing different guidelines based on region? And will anybody listen?